and welcome to TJ Atarian. So it's a pleasure to welcome you back. Not put a video out for a little while. I did record a piece a week or so ago where I was talking about the problems I've been having with my recording setup uh, due to issues with hard drives, capture devices. So I did this little piece. Unfortunately, when I was going into the edit, I found that I'd made a mistake cobbling together a temporary system. The audio track was knackered, um, overlaid on itself. It was really echoey because uh, I think the monitor had fed back in. So yeah, complete mess. So yeah, I'm here to talk about the same stuff I was trying to talk about back then. So although my piece to camera was bad, uh, I did capture a few sections looking inside a particular machine. So um, we'll get to those shortly. So yeah, to summarize my system issues, I've now got a replacement SSD drive, two terabyte drive for my PC, now running on Windows 11. That's after that went kaput before. I've been through two different video capture devices to get one that's A, compatible with Windows 11 after that change, and B, that took the video correctly from various machines that I want. Um, the first one that I acquired worked fine on Atari 800XL and um, I believe other 8-bit Ataris. Wouldn't take any input from the ST, so yeah, a bit odd, uh, so I had to buy something else. So I've now got a Nero video capture device, uh, Nero Recode, it's called. And yeah, it seems to work reasonably well. Looks very much like an easy cap USB device I had before in terms of the form factor of it. Same kind of little uh, USB case housing. But it works, that's the difference on Windows 11. Well, it was a deal breaker that the other one wasn't working on a particular machine, an Atari ST. Um, because I wanted to make an ST video, that's what I'm here to talk about today. I had an ST which had a meg of memory in it um, and it was a little bit cobbled together uh, it was a 1040 and a 520 case with badges switched around very similar to back in the day when i had an stfm um, and that had, had a memory upgrade so similar experience uh, i've been playing around with gotech drive to load things and um, as those that watch my videos will know i'd also had a bit of a play with the side cart but i had trouble loading a few of the games wasn't entirely sure whether it was one or two things, it was either sort of weird hard drive images that, um, where people have tried to convert the floppy loading games to run from hard drive um, that weren't particularly compatible with um, this GemDOS drive, I believe it's called, which it emulates. And they were more designed for something else like the Ultra Satan, perhaps, a device I haven't managed to get my hands on. Or could it be that I'd heard the amount of memory required in the machine where normally a game that would run in one meg perhaps won't run using this GemDOS drive because that is using up some space in memory as well. So you need, you know, two meg or plus to run these games really. Uh, so on that point, on a kind of a whim, I was having a look at machines on the internet and another thing is I've never had uh, an STE and I was aware that it was easier to upgrade the memories on STEs uh, because I, I don't know the internals of the STs as well as I do the 8-bit machines. Didn't really fancy doing any soldering, which I think would be required on the uh, STFM. So, on eBay the uh, couple of weeks ago, I managed to acquire myself an STE. Well, let's have a look and see. Let's jump into the video, which I took on my mobile after the other bit that I had to scrub out. So, uh, we'll have a look at that now. Okay, so here we are over at my work desk, <clears throat> and this is what I've acquired. So I've already had this running, as I've mentioned. It's a 520 STE, and I never had an STE, now I've got an STE. So I, I'm a happy bunny before we even started. Um, and it's in rather nice condition. There's just a little bit of yellowing you can see on the side there, but and look at the colour of the rest of the case. That's really clean. I mean, you can't ask for much more than that when you're buying something this old on eBay. I'm very pleased, working machine, good. So I've already had the screws out of the bottom of this, um, so I won't bore you with that. Um, those are all the ones that come out the back. So I should just be able to lift this case off um, very carefully because I am using mobile camera and having to hold it. So there we go, let's pull that and very carefully put it out of the way. The case doesn't seem that brittle, but you know, it kind of isn't going to be something you want to be throwing around. It's going to crack quite easily. Right, so, oh, being very careful here. Yep, so the keyboard is connected. We're going to have that out very carefully. And we're just going to put that up. This is when I realise I've forgotten. I've left the joystick and mouse plugged in, so let's just carefully reach under and gently remove 
various one and two and then the keyboard should then lift away okay so the second that wasn't the Atari case falling over that was something else do not want that to topple okay right um again the next thing I've done there's a number of screws that have been removed and the uh, shielding has these little metal struts that need twisting so that you can then lift them out of their slots already done that so this should well that should all come apart but I don't need actually to take that out at this stage yet so oh, let's just remove the power forgot about that right um, <laughs> <laughs> um, this one shielding the uh, power supply again I've already um, straightened those so it just lifts straight off and here we go this is what we're looking at so we have four memory slots but then this is when I've realized something if you look at these that doesn't look like what you would connect normal sims to or sims as I remember them they're pin connectors. So I wasn't aware of this. I've seen pictures of STEs which look very much like they take normal SIMs um, with the flat connectors. Uh, I've also seen uh, some of those online that you can buy. Uh, Retro Lemon had some STE RAM, so I thought that was my route. But these looked a bit different. So a little bit of further research. Um, certain models came with this type of RAM and they're not SIMs, SIM connectors, they're SIPs and it's a different type of RAM entirely and I haven't been able to find a modern commercial source for these so what I had to do was have a look for something secondhand on eBay or, or custom on eBay, I'm not actually sure how old the RAM is so anyway switching back that's what the current RAM looks like but um, I'm going to switch back to the other cam now so as I was saying over there, this particular STE takes single inline pin package memory, not the single inline memory modules that I was used to from you know my old 486 PC. Not all of them do. Um, I'm not quite sure the ratio of STEs and what types take these and what types take the other. But um, yeah, I just wasn't aware of this at all. I'd seen the standard flat pin sims available um, on eBay, on uh, Retro Lemon was one of the stores I saw. You could get them. I understand you they're pin compatible, so you could sort of solder pins onto the standard sims, but yeah, didn't really fancy doing that. So I had a bit of hunt around. And I found a um, little bit more expensive, but I could get um, the proper uh, SIP memory. Um, I'm not too sure the units that I got, whether it was brand new or sort of old new stock, because they look pretty pristine. But yeah, let's have a look. First of all, um, there's a little bit of video taken from Sysinfo on the existing STE, so you'll see that now. Um, and then back at the bench, um, we're going to see if we can upgrade this round. Okay, so here we are at the bench, and these are my existing memory modules. Let's just see if we can, uh, yep, I think we'll stay with that. Right, so, this is what we've got, and I don't think there's any real finesse to this. Can't really get to the side of it anyway, so I'm literally just going to hold this firmly. Oh, that really doesn't want to come out like that, okay. Maybe we do need to just prize. Yeah, okay, that comes out pretty easily. So that's our existing. So, um, oh, yeah, you do have to be a bit careful. The pin has got slightly bent there, but that will easily move back. Okay, so that's one of them. Noting the positioning of the chips. And do we have the pin numbers? Well, yeah, well, that's pin one to that side, I would assume. Okay, fine. And uh, let's try and get this one out from the middle quite firmly. A little bit up each side. Oh, there we go. That was a bit more even pressure. So we'll put them safely over there. But we're hoping we won't need those anymore. Because uh, we have these guys um, that we're going to put in. 
So let's get that properly on the camera. Pin one and pin 30 there. So one is that side, 30 is that side. So looking at this one where we have one and 30, it's that way round. I'm very confident in my logic there. Is that pin out slightly? It looks slightly off. It is. Straight out the box. The pins aren't straight. Only slightly, but <clears throat> before I try to force it in, glad I spotted that. One thirty. Really, I'm doing this for the benefit of the camera, but it's making it a bit of an awkward angle for me to actually place the ram in. This is not helping. It's kind of in the way, it's a bit, a bit tall. There. Can't get my hands in at the right angle. Oh. Right, there we go. Right, yep, they're all, I can feel that. They're all lined up pretty well, I think. Um, are they? Yeah. Yeah, that's in. That's safe. Right, next. Checking the orientation. One thirty. We're this way round. Yeah. Okay, that feels right. Um, what did I do with the other two? They're just up there. Still in the sleeve or whatever you would like to call that. Okay, last couple are going in. sort of feel it a bit better how they're supposed to slot down pretty straight and easy to align these ones in fact the existing ram looked a bit on the wonk maybe it had been maybe someone had been inside the case is that straight oh, it's not feeling right actually that's uh, it's gone in on one side but that might have bent the pins oh man Right, oh, I've got to be very careful here. These are quite potentially semi rare parts. Right. No, no damage. I just was not entirely straight going in so let's double check the alignment one and thirty so it's that way round let's try to rest it with all the pins aligned first yeah that feels that feels fine it's got, oh. yeah it's just maybe maybe they were just slightly misaligned right okay that looks lovely actually it really does Looks you know, compared to these old sticks. Uh, anyway, let's see if this is going to work. Okay, so I've come back to try and complete this video talking over the um, old footage here where I was uh, running sysinfo for the first time after upgrading the RAM. And there you go, we've got 496 kilobytes of RAM. So the next thing I was doing then, before I carried on trying to load these games, I realised there was a new firmware for the sidecart. So took a little detour, uh, went to the sidecart website, as you can see, downloaded the firmware, and um, got a bit confused doing this. We eventually worked out the right button combination that you had to hold down to get the drive to come up where you drop the firmware file which is 
different from the normal drive it presents the PC when you plug a USB cable into the sidecar to a PC where you see the contents of the SD card. Um, so once I've worked out the combination, copied the file in and immediately when you drop the firmware file on it disconnects and reconnects to my surprise there because I've forgotten <laughs> what it did um, and that means it has reloaded the new firmware. So yeah, so we boot up the ST and uh, yeah, we confirm their version 1.0.0 We've got the latest version of the sidecar firmware and um, I think I proceeded to do a little test. I can't remember what I loaded up, um, but it was just really a sanity check. Uh, guess what? The best thing to do shortly would be, yeah, let's capture a new video with some games which only work with four megabytes of RAM. Try and make sure that we've got uh, yeah, images that uh, work from the Gemdos hard drive. So I uh, will do that shortly.